Just shooting a little bee here. Oh, man. Wow. Look at that. Got it stuck. Reminds me of my high school days. Oh, well. Never played basketball. Let's get to it. Really liking my new Ranger truck right here. This thing's pretty popping. All right, so Buck, you in your doghouse? All right, Buck, you stay there. I need to go feed the cattle here quick, quickly. Uh, water the cattle. Uh, we are behind, so it is harvest time, full fledged. Uh, Jim called and basically begged us to come help him out, so we're gonna go do that. First, we got to feed our cattle, though. So, we're going to take this load. Uh, this isn't mixed. It's just silage for right now. Uh, take it over to our new Holsteins. Don't think they are producing milk yet. So, a lot of them are young. So, they're not really uh, producing age or able yet. Turn around over here. Gotta stay away from the, the manure pile right there. That's important. Man. These. We got a full fledge. Come on. I need a louder horn on this old uh, feed truck here. So we got two sets of cattle on this farm. So one set's our cow calf operation. The other set is basically our... Our dairy operation we just started up. Uh, now we need to feed our cow calves. A little bit of holes. Silage. And then uh, now that this mixture's down, we will uh, put some uh, straw and grass and make this some uh, TMR. So we're just hurrying up. Uh, we are late to Jim's already. He wanted us there at least by nine, and I just had too much stuff going on in the farm, so. Gotta feed these cattle, milk these cattle, make sure they're taken care of. All right, so these cattle should be good to go now. All right, so feeding's done. Now we just have to uh, make sure we water these cattle. It's kind of annoying. Our electric waterer keeps breaking over here. For whatever reason, can't get them to work correctly. So just uh, more time we get to use this uh, Massey Harris. Oh, get out of here. Back up, cattle. Can't come out this gate. All right, we'll start this old girl up. Always like how this thing sounds. This thing is a little underpowered for this big water tank, but we get there eventually, let's just say that. Start filling this up over here. Yeah, these pumps, I don't know why they just don't keep running for whatever reason. Alright, already done. So, I need to put some more weight on the front of this uh, old Massey Harris. We, we do some wheel stands from time to time. But, other than that, it's working pretty good. I do like the trike just because I can turn so sharply with it, but with that I need uh, more weight in front, so. Alright, we'll shut this gate. Alright, so now we are done with the chores this morning and we need to head to Jim's. 
So our crops are ready to go too, but basically Jim really is behind and he wants us to help out. So this said he's this is his last prep preparing for harvest. Today we're gonna take the old ranger. Just amazing that when you have an old truck like this, how much you actually use it. You know, nice trucks are really nice, or new trucks are really nice to have and uh, for everyday use, but when you have an old truck like this, it just seems like you want to drive it all the time. At least I do. So, especially if it runs good, uh, you don't have any issues with the carburetor or anything like that. I know. You know, you sometimes have to tear apart the carburetor, clean it out, and get it, uh, maybe overhaul it or put new seals in the carburetor. But other than that, they'll basically run forever. Good thing about these trucks are you really simple to actually uh, fix yourselves. Where a new truck, you know, you got to have a programming chip or a diagnostic. Uh, or something so you could basically be able to repair it a lot of the parts you don't want to repair it just because it's such of a pain and they're so confined or whatever all right so we are about at Jim's let's see what he has in store for us today turn this old girl off you always know when you're running a carburetor truck because it takes a little while after you turn off it Jim should like this new uh, Ford I have here. Alright, let's see. Alright, so we have a long list of to-do. Uh, he did... We gotta go pick up his uh, harvester. He uh, put his uh, class combine. He had some upgrades to it. So we're gonna have to go pick that up. Uh, he said, for whatever reason, because it took so long to get to harvest season, this demo on this uh, class... 960 is up which is unfortunate so I was really hoping to be able to drive this I just didn't really get to drive it much uh, but more of the the local farmers around here want to get to use it and drive it and he right now he doesn't want to buy it so we got to take that back take it to the dealer and pick up his combine and see what else so I know we just hooked this up but we're gonna have to unhook this uh, this Ford again well, Jim really likes the Fords I mean, he basically has Ford everything Ford semis Ford uh, trucks he's a brand loyal Ford that's for sure all right so we're gonna pull this out and uh, I'm gonna hopefully I always hate pulling this trailer in Jim's little uh, driveway here it's a horrible trailer to drive through this driveway but oh well oh yeah we made it this time which is good we usually have to have a little assist or something when we're over there so we're driving over to the next town so they have a class dealer here so we don't have a local dealer around this area so we have to drive down here which isn't too far of a drive but usually it means that you're not gonna road the equipment back to your house so you gotta go pick it up but no matter we'll get this old truck put in here man so I almost got to the dealership, and Jim called me just chewing my butt. I don't know what was wrong with me. I just hooked up to the trailer and started driving here. I was supposed to bring that class tractor back. What is wrong with me today? I'm seriously worried. I might get fired today like that. I wasted a lot of uh, diesel here driving back. It's such a stupid. I, I don't know. Maybe I need a cup of coffee or something. I am not on it today. I'm such a dumbo. So weird. We just got back. So now I gotta go pick up this uh, tractor that I was supposed to do the first time. So, man, I feel so stupid. 
I know Jim's like gonna chew me out once I get to this place. Alright, so we're backing it up, uh, which we should have did the first time around. I know. I'm trying to like do this as quick as possible so I don't have to talk to Jim. Alright, we're gonna get this tractor. We're gonna get out of here as quick as possible because don't want to see Jim, don't want to see Jim. Alright, let's unhook this. Start this up. Jim. I'm really worried. Hoping Jim don't show up there, so I know he's around here somewhere. This is not a huge farmyard. Hopefully he's just trying to cool off and uh, not talk to us. Let's get this on here and get out of here as quick as possible. Alright, that should be good. Make sure we chain this down. Don't, well, that'll definitely fire us if we lose this tractor. Alright. Let's get this hitched up and get out of here. Alright, that's hitched now. Alright. We are out of here now. Alright. We uh, missed the gym confrontation there, so uh, somehow now I'm just worried that I'm going to have it sometime today. Alright, so we actually got the tractor on the back now. We're headed to the dealer like we should have been the first time. Man. Just don't know what's going on with me today. Alright, so we're pulling in here with our tractor. Good thing the dealership didn't see us as a dumbo. We've been, been like, uh, what are you doing? Well, where's our tractor? So we will basically uh, get this unloaded here quickly. Put the park brake on. All right, now we gotta unhitch this, take the park brake off. All right, so we gotta park this in the garage quickly. All right, driving this off. They said they want it right in this old garage here. Back this old girl up. All right, so it's in the garage. Let's see what he has here. So, Jim got a few options put on his harvester. So, he got tracks put on the front, which pretty cool in my mind. He uh, changed his ladder here to uh, basically be more economical for the track versions. And he got one heck of a hopper put on. So, pretty nice options he has now on this harvester this thing is a beast let's go up there and see first class you so all the options seem the same inside the cab here so I know Jim was off contemplating getting a new harvester but he said for this year he's basically just gonna update this harvester all right, so that harvester is on. So they did go over the whole harvester and check it out, make sure there was no major issues, no major wear anywhere around it. So we are good to go now. All right, got turned around. Harvester is on the back there, fallen. So it is kind of nice because it's so narrow now. We don't really have to worry about that. But man, it sure does look top heavy. With all that grain on the top now. And the narrow tracks. Yeah, so that thing definitely looks a little top heavy. That grain bin on the top is giant. I'm really going to have to watch the overpasses while I'm going back. Uh, make sure. I don't meet the, the height 
restriction because that will be even a worse day for me. Don't think Jim will like me tearing off his new bin extension he got today. Some of these branches are kind of low too. I'm going to have to watch out for them. Jim's plan is to basically get started into corn harvest. So that's the plan, he said. So you will see. He says he has another demo in work. So I don't know exactly what he's talking about. Because Jim has a lot of nice tractors. So I don't know exactly. But he says he wants to start going all tracks. He's considering it. So he's slowly going looking through for more tracked option tractors. Alright, the harvester's on its way now. Took the tractor back. We got the new harvester in on the back here. So now I need to get this harvester off the trailer, park the trailer, hook the harvester to the corn head drive the harvester off I think I'm just gonna leave it right here for now because I kind of didn't think about it and I parked that truck in front of the corn head so oh well all right got the trailer hooked up uh, before I get unhook this I'm gonna see if I need to haul this other uh, tractor or whatever demo he's talking about all right, so Jim told me a whole bunch of four-letter words. Basically, chewed my butt. Told me just to park the trailer. That was an extremely uncomfortable conversation. Uh, I deserved it, though, so not a big deal. When you get chewed out from your, from your boss, the only ones that I hate are the ones that isn't your fault, or it's your boss's fault, or something like that. The only times I really hate getting chewed out by my boss. When it's my fault, I just sit there and take it. Alright, so let's make sure we don't hit uh, Jim's old uh, truck back here. Hitch is undone. Well, the trailer's backed up now. I think this is enough room. Actually, I'm going to get it over just a little bit farther. Jim really should be looking for a bigger uh, farmyard, to be honest. This farmyard is tiny. So, that parking looks way better. I'm going to leave it there. Now I'm going to hook back up to the, the Wilson trailer here. Alright, so that is done. So I'm going to hop in and get a ride from Jim. So we're just going across the street, really. We're going to pick up his new demo tractor. Man, do I like Jim's truck. Truck is sweet. All right, we're at the John Deere dealership. Let's see what we got in store for us. Ooh. Ooh. Is this it? Oh, man, Jim. So we got an 84R with uh, tracks on it. So this is an aftermarket track. This is not to be confused with the new 8Rs that are coming out there, but these are saucy tracks or something like that. Uh, he says he's going to demo this tractor, so he doesn't know for sure if he wants this type of track system, but... Uh, I mean, this is probably way cheaper than the new 8R coming out here in the near future. So let's go. Wow. Insides are nice and clean. Woo. Zero hours on this old girl. Oh, look at that. So, all these options. Change the screen around here. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Open up the back window. Put them out. Yeah, this thing 
pretty nifty. So, got a lot of options on it. Pretty cool in my book. So, literally, we just have to drive right across the road here. So, the job today is to get this hooked up. We're going to hopefully start in to harvesting. We've got to get everything ready here quickly. So, this has to go on his new JM. Hook this all up. Wow. Now that is a sweet operation right there. Yep, I'm impressed, Jim. You did it once again. You have the best piece of equipment out around. So we're gonna shut this off quickly. Uh, and then we gotta hook up the harvester here. Got to get the corn head on here. Jim wants to start in corn. So I know usually you start in soybeans, but he doesn't want to start that at first. Thinks the corn is, uh, he's going to do some, uh, what you call wet corn. Alright, so we'll back this up here quickly. This is hard getting this together, so... Jim is slowly starting to go to uh, basically all tracks. That's his mindset. So with the wet springs we're having around here and dealing with the wet fall is he thinks that this is the best option to stay in the field is going tracks. So he has a tracked uh, grain cart. Uh, this grain cart isn't going to be tracked, but I mean, look at this thing. This thing has tread all over it. These big wide tires and big floater tires in the back. Even if this thing gets stuck, which it, it's pretty wet conditions, if not, he does, he can just handle it with one grain cart and that. So that was his uh, plan anyways. He usually runs two grain carts for the simple fact is he needs to keep this uh, big uh, what is this? I think this is considered a 9 series combine running at all times. That's why he got that big hopper on there. So, so if he's waiting for the trucks or the semis, he can always have, so he can just have more storage in the field. If he's doing a smaller field that doesn't have to transport the grain that far to the semis, then of course he's just going to use one grain cart. Uh, decrease that manpower a little bit but if the trucks can't get into the field he has to load on the highway and stuff like that uh, we'll probably be running two grain carts just to help with the efficiency of the farm all right so we got everything loaded we're gonna take it to the field we're just taking it right across the street there so not that far of a trip so we're gonna hopefully get started it is kind of late in the day, so I don't know. We might just make one small pass. So just to make sure the, the harvester's running, there's no issues with it, and probably hit it hard the next couple days. The, uh, the good thing is we're not going far, so we don't have to worry about transporting back and forth as much. Yeah, so I don't know where Jim wants to load the semis at. This, I mean, look at this hill here. No problem for this old girl, but don't know exactly where a semi isn't going to get up there. Let's just say that. All right, so I'm going to climb through the woods here. Basically, uh, and then uh, bring the harvester over. I don't know if we're even going to bring that other uh, grain cart because I don't think we're going to get far enough in. So, actually, Jim wants me to take a truck there first just to pull in. He says we're going to go the, the other direction. Don't know exactly what he means, but I think over on the other side of this barn here, that's where we're going to start unloading or hopefully unload at don't know exactly I know I have to park it going 
out. Don't want to have a full load and have to turn around. So I guess we'll just drive around this uh, small little field here. That's the plan. Like I said, I doubt we're going to get even a load on a combine today. So this is just to store it. Alright, so now we just have to go get the harvester here quickly. Hop over the fence. Alright, gonna turn our hazards on here. This is a little of a narrow road to be driving with this uh, big 12 row head. Say big 12 row head. 12 row heads ain't even big anymore. That's the problem. Yeah, wow, this is tight right here. See if we can get by here. All right. So, got it. Definitely got to look for traffic. We don't have to go that far, but these people are crazy on this highway. That's that's for sure. We're going to go right in here. Probably cut the inroads here first. No, just make sure our harvester's set cuz when you're uh, count binding a uh, wet corn you kind of have to have different settings and dry corn hazards off so this is always a panic mode for me especially when they work on the combine so turning on the harvester I just I just think that something's gonna go wrong so we're gonna turn it on and then turn it right off right away All right, I didn't hear a loud bang. I'm gonna make sure. Just gonna look at all the belts and everything and the chains and make sure I don't see anything obvious. Cause you never know when people look at it, they might leave a wrench in there. They might, you know, leave a belt off accidentally. I mean, people, human beings will always be human. So you gotta plan for that. All right, well, it's running. I don't hear anything loud banging in the back. So let's see how this thing cuts here. I'm gonna cut down here just a little bit farther. So it looks like we're getting about 200 bushels per acre. Not bad, not bad. Raise up the corn head. All right, I'm going to shut it off quickly. So we are going to bale the corn stalks here. So we got that piling up. Uh, just basically checking to make sure we aren't leaving any seed or uh, any uh, volunteer corn next year. I see, I don't see anything that the head is missing here. I don't see anything out the back of the combine, so there's nothing in the wind row. All right. I do see I have to put my stock stompers down. So I think we're just going to do one bin load, so probably one pass around the whole field here. Not going to get too far. Don't want to leave corn. Jim's already pissed off at me. I'm going to have to get these, this corn here. Jim is already too pissed off for me to do something like that. Uh, Jim does like the John Deere corn heads, so I know you guys want uh, a matching corn head, but this is just how Jim likes it, so this is pretty common to be honest, so you know, there's a lot of people that aren't brand loyal that like uh, one style head and probably got a deal on the harvester or something or, you know, just found a good deal on either the harvester or the head and has a uh, mismatching head, but uh, you can buy adapters for all these, so it's not a big deal. So, I mean, most people really don't look care how stuff looks they just care about the functionality of it and to be honest you know all the options on this corn head uh, you just can't find that somewhere else you know 
John Deere makes a uh, pretty good corn head in my book. So, kind of like planters. I think John Deere on corn head and planters, they're kind of a step ahead from everyone else. 12 rows at a time here, running about just under 200 bushels per acre, which is pretty good for Oregon. Uh, Jim does want to sell me all the straw he has off of here, so we're going to plan on bailing this up, hopefully. We're just going to hit the end rows here. I don't know why I went this direction. I should have probably went the other direction so I can unload, but this ground is definitely uneven, so unloading on the go isn't the easiest task in this ground. You don't want to, you know, run into the grain cart with your auger. That'd be a bad day. That'd be a, definitely a firing day for me, especially the rest of the stuff I did today. So I really like the extra horsepower boost Jim put on this uh, harvester. Uh, the old harvester would have hard time getting up them type of hills, but man, this thing, even with that big grain extension and everything, has no problem, no bogging down. We're harvesting about at seven miles an hour. Yeah, the only problem I hate about this is you can't see as good of uh, the auger you can with John Deere's. Uh, John Deere's, you can definitely see the auger really easy. You don't really have to bend down. So, other than that, this uh, harvester is pretty nice. Alright, so we are just going to leave the harvester right here. So, Jim wanted me to test out this uh, grain cart here quickly. And obviously the tractor, make sure everything, all the connections are good. Push up this buddy seat here. Alright, I want that set to that. Alright, there we go. Make sure this auger folds out correctly. Alright, that's a little annoying that the auger is right in that fence post or right in the actual uh, post right there. Cab post. Alright, it looks like we are uh, unloaded here, but we will tarp these uh, for the night here and uh, get turned in and get an early start tomorrow. Thank you all for watching and I will see you later here in Oregon. Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, and share and subscribe. See you next time.